Recently, I've been working with a program that I haven't touched in about a year. And there's some exciting things that are coming to it. And this is the program made by Isotropics called IFX Clarice. So this program is a lighting, set dressing, um, rendering software. Basically, it's a scene assembly program. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, why should I spend extra money to go and get a program just to assemble my scenes? Um, but I assure you, this is something that you're going to want to at least take a look at and see if it's right for you. So it is, it does have a free version. I want to point that out to start off with. It does have a free version that you can pick up um, and take a look at. It's fully featured and just like something like Houdini. So you can learn all you want while you're using it until you decide that you actually want to get into it. And then you can pick it up for, this is going to be a little bit expensive for your first year, but it is a thousand dollars. After that though, it does drop down to $250 for a year of maintenance uh, renewal. So basically expensive for the first year, but the subsequent years after that, it's going to fall more in line with your typical renderer or other um, program um, maintenance renewal. Now, I do want to point out that it is not a modeling program. It is specifically to use for rendering um, and assembling your scenes. So don't expect to do any sort of uh, modeling with it, but you will be wanting to set up your scenes and do stuff in Clarice because it is a workhorse of a program. So as you guys can see, this scene that I have here is uh, a train with a bunch of trees. If I zoom out here, just scattered around. One of the main things that you're going to see in Clarice is that it can handle an astronomical amount of polygons. You probably noticed, but up here we have 413 billion polygons, and that's not even close to what it can what it can handle, depending on your machine. So it's got a ton of of trees scattered around this scene. If I actually go in here and take a look at it, you can see in our point cloud we have 700,000 trees scattered around this scene. So just an astronomical amount of polygons, astronomical amount of uh, geometry set up in your scene, and it's just handling it like it's nothing. And that's because this is all a fully ray traced viewport. So right now I have it set to the progressive render. So this is what it's actually gonna look like in your render. If I pop over to the image view here, this is the uh, promo image that's fully rendered out. If I were to pop into my camera, if I jump back into our scene and load our camera here, as this renders, you're gonna see it looks just like it would here in the image view. So our final image and our 3D view just work in just like uh, you see in your viewport. And that's what makes this program just absolutely amazing is you can work directly in your viewport and have things just work uh, super quick and you don't have to worry about what your image is going to look like or what your uh, materials look like. You don't have to wait for anything to reload into the actual render. It just starts working, which is awesome. And the file sizes as well, it's all based around Python, I believe. And the file sizes are like kilobytes which is just unheard of for any sort of um, any sort of program. And as you, you probably pay attention here, as I move around the scene and do stuff, this is going to save periodically. Um, it should pop up down here, but it'll save every like 30 seconds or, or every few seconds and uh, does a little auto save for you. So if the program does crash, which it's very stable, it uh, will rec be able to recover probably everything that you've done if you if you ever run into that and you can see our scenes uh moving along here and and just rendering itself out you may think this is moving a little bit slow as we move around obviously it, it gets real grainy and that's just because we're in the progressive uh renderer with a ton of polygons being pushed so if i drop this down to uh, smooth shading you see loads a lot quicker goes a lot quicker you can move around a lot faster in here if i go to previs this is just going to not have any of your lighting in here and it moves a little bit quicker than your uh, progressive rendering as well so i pop that back to progressive rendering i go ahead and split my viewport up here if i pull up a second 3d view here and i 
pop a new context in here. Let's just load one of these trees into this context. As this uh, loads into here, you see that uh, we have our tree in here. And this will really illustrate just how quickly it can uh, move about. So let's drag this over. If I set this to progressive rendering now, unselect it, see it's already, you're already seeing your close to your final um, image of what your, what your geometry is gonna be looking like. So as I crank this value up here, this is gonna be how many iterations it does of rendering, how many times it progressively renders basically. You can get a very good idea of what your scene's gonna be looking like. And if I didn't have this rendering over here, it would go even faster. Now, the one thing that I will mention here, actually before I get into that, is I click this denoiser. We have our optics denoiser here that you can take a look at and use that in your scenes as well. Now, obviously you may wanna set this down to something lower, maybe we set it to like 40%. So it does 40% of the rendering before, let's actually drop that down too, before the optics denoiser takes uh, a hold. And then you'll see that it kicks in and, or sorry, it does 60% of the rendering. And then the, the denoiser will kick in and will give you closer to what you're, you're finally looking like. So a lot of really cool stuff that you can do with this program. Now the one thing that I will mention here and I want to make sure that this is known. Uh, it's, it is a CPU render. However, and don't be able to click it off the video yet, it is a CPU render, but in the very near future, sometime in 2021 here, we will be seeing a GPU and CPU render inside of Clarice. So you'll be able to leverage not just the power of your CPU, not just the power of your GPU, but the power of both of them combined which is absolutely awesome for anybody that's just working um, as their hobby or it's their, you know, their workstation, maybe they're a freelancer, um, their home workstation stuff, uh, people that don't have like $10,000 workstations to, to work on. So absolutely awesome that they're bringing that and it is uh, looking really, really fast based off of the releases from Isotropics. Now, this isn't just limited to uh, geometry. You can bring in uh, things like VDBs as well, and you'll see them right in your viewport as well. You don't have bounding boxes. You don't have little points to represent your volumes. You see the final volume. So that's a, another strong point of, of Clarice here as well, as well as its scattering abilities. You saw you have 700,000 trees inside this scene. Um, so there's a, a ton of different control that you have over everything, as well as, uh, your typical, you know, render settings and stuff like that. You have a ton of material control. If I bring up our, or to bring up a material, we have the different node graphs here. So everything that you have inside of Clarice has a node graph assigned to it pretty much. So if I were to, let's go, that's not gonna have a node graph because it's geometry. Let's see um, our scatterer here. So our scatterer has a node graph and you can use different nodes to drive the um, aspects of the scatterer, which is absolutely awesome. And one of the things that I'm using, I bring up my point cloud here, I'm using the height map to drive this, um, the, the, where the points are showing up on our geometry. And this is actually a displaced terrain. So if I go back into our terrain here and take a look, this is our texture map or our uh, terrain map. It's, uh, it loads up. This is the, this will be the um, displacement map that um, I'm using on the actual terrain once it finally loads up. Probably taking a minute because we're uh, rendering and we're uh, recording as well. So there's the, the terrain that we have um, here. So this is our, our height map and this is being fully displaced. Now, one thing that you probably have run into in other programs is having issues getting your geometry to scatter on top of your displacements and get it to line up properly. You don't have to worry about that inside of Clarice. All of the uh, points and all of these, uh, these trees are instance 
right on top of the geometry after it's been displaced, which is absolutely incredible. You don't have to fiddle around and try to get things to line up properly. You can um, just pop a scatter down, bring in a point cloud and uh, just tweak a couple settings and then everything's lining up perfectly, which is exactly what you are looking for to, to work quickly. So definitely a lot of cool things inside of Clarice. There is uh, some stuff that, that Clarice has on their, or Isotropics has on their YouTube channel, but most of it's buried inside of 20 minute, 30 minute long videos. So I'm gonna be going over, you know, simple things in uh, shorter videos so that you don't have to go diving into a bunch of uh, 20, 30 minute long videos in order to find uh, a simple little thing that you're looking for. So we gonna be taking a look at a lot of different things. So that's gonna be the plan for the, the near future here is we're gonna be taking a look at Clarice and how we can do different things inside of Clarice. So definitely take a look at this program. Like I said, you can download it and use the free non-commercial edition um, and you, it's fully featured. Just take a look at it. Uh, start to learn the program and see what you can do inside of it. It's very good for uh, a lot of different things. It's very good at uh, staying organized inside of your actual scenes and the file sizes are, are tiny so you can make a, a ton of projects without having to worry about anything. It's all referencing the geometry that you make in outside applications. So definitely take a look at it. Like I said, we're going to be diving into it more. So uh, keep an eye out for those videos, but thank you guys for watching and have a good day.